NBA superstar LeBron James has joined Michael Jordan to become the second NBA player to arrive at billionaire status. He is the first to be an active NBA player to become a billionaire. Congratulations. Congratulations to the brother LeBron James. Man, this is quite a feat. This is something we all need to pay attention to. And not just because of the status of billionaire. There's a much deeper lesson that we need to pay attention to and learn from. How did he get there? Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Now, toasters, as you come in, you know the routine. Go ahead and hit the like button. Make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe if you have not subscribed. You do not want to miss this great content. Wow, LeBron James just became a billionaire. Uh, like I said, he joined Michael Jordan to become the second NBA player uh, to become a billionaire. And he's the first, the first active NBA player to become a billionaire. Man, that is quite a feat. That is something that we need to applaud. Uh, regardless of how you feel about money, regardless of how you feel about LeBron, regardless of how you feel about capitalism, this is quite a feat. But there's a deeper message, there's a deeper lesson we need to pay attention to. And first off, that is this brother's plight, his trek, his road to riches. Now this brother comes from humble, humble beginnings. And he arrived to this point of billionaire status. Uh, living in the projects, mother on drugs, not knowing who his father was or is. But he was blessed with immense talent. Immense talent. That was recognized and nurtured by other men at a very young age. You know, I know a lot of times these men are not recognized. Um. Uh, you know, we do that a lot in this society, especially the black community. You know, uh, there were men nurturing and honing this brother's skills, making sure he stayed on the right course, making sure he was at practice, making sure he worked out, making sure he had what he needed. There were men in the community, coaches, mentors, uh, the fathers of friends, that looked out for LeBron, although his mom had a drug addiction and was unreliable many times. There were men in his life that protected him and provided for him. Now, not to come down on his mom, his mom was the vessel. His mom was the vessel. And this is a lesson, you know, everybody needs to know, like the woman is the vessel. It's the man's seed. The woman is the vessel. But we all belong to the world. We all belong to the world, meaning we're supposed to hone and nurture and perfect our gifts and talents to not only provide for ourselves, but the end game is to share with others, to empower others, to enlighten others, to see to help others see the light within themselves, to help others see the gifts and talents they were blessed with and motivate and inspire them to push forward also to reach their highest, their highest selves. But you think about a brother who was born and raised in the conditions he was raised with. He had every vice, every negative vice in front of him to take hold of and indulge in and allow to destroy him. Now, I don't know if he ever uh, indulged at all, but we can definitely say 
even if he indulged, it didn't destroy him. It didn't overtake him. But I don't think he, he did anything. And that's to be applauded. There's a lot of brothers, a lot of sisters out here that were born and raised in worse conditions, that were born and raised in better conditions than LeBron, but still get sidetracked and don't fight through the demons, don't fight through the darkness and allow things to overtake them. And they never reach the level that they could truly reach if they understood discipline, understood the end goal, understood what the mission is and the purpose is. So this brother is to be congratulated, you know, from the, the hoods of Akron, Ohio. You know, this brother made it through that and stayed pretty clean to our knowledge throughout that course. But although, man, this billionaire status is quite a feat, man, it should be applauded. You know, I don't marginalize or minimize that impact or the significance of that at all. But his plight is the jewel. This plight is the jewel. And what it took for him to get to this point, it took discipline, it took denying some things, rejecting some things, not taking part in some things. And it took a team. It took some men in the community, coaches, like I said, the fathers of friends of his, uh, giving him the attention, giving him the guidance he needed. But most of all, it took LeBron knowing who he was and where he wanted to go and being accountable, being focused, being self-disciplined. But man, we, we really got to recognize also, like I said, that team, that team. Man, we got to give a shout out to Savannah, his wife. Women really need to pay attention to this woman. I don't know this woman, of course, but i tell you this, that's a good thing. That's a good thing we don't know this woman like that. And maybe we'll know more about her later, you know, in due time. Maybe once he exits the game, she'll come forth more often. But there are some women that we know and there are also women that we've seen attached to NBA players, the wives of NBA players, the girlfriends of NBA players, that can't take the back seat, that can't take the passenger seat, that can't take that supportive role and be okay with not getting the shine, not getting the attention, and just being that nurturer that supporting force behind the man. You know, I just saw the other day former former NFL player Ricky Williams say that he legally took on his wife's last name. And the reason for this was, according to him, that his superstardom, his name, his prowess would give her a complex, made her insecure. Because although she's an attorney, when they would go out, or even with friends or family, only his accolades, only his stardom, only his accomplishments were recognized. And he felt, or she felt, that caused an, un an imbalance in the relationship. And so he felt to bring balance, he would take on her last name to make her feel better. Let me tell you, fellas, sisters, that ain't going to work. It's just a matter of time before that crash and burns. That ain't going to work. There's something deeper going on within both of them. She knew who Ricky Wiggins was before she got with him, before she married him. 
So there's something deeper within her going on. There's something deeper with him going on for him to even sign up for that. I see insecurity all around that. And that's not to, you know, badger them or come down on them too hard. I'm just calling it like I see it so we can try to avoid some things. And with my own life, you know, I share a lot with my own life so you can avoid some things. And that's what it's all about, man, learning and then teaching what we've learned. You know, that's what the Bible is. That's what that's what Solomon, King Solomon, uh, his writings are about. That's what a lot of writings in the Bible is about. It's about a plight. And for us to see the lives of different people, whether it's allegory or not, say this is what you avoid. Don't avoid this. And this is what you need to run to or be attracted to. And so that's how I look at the lives of anybody, even my life, is a lesson to others. So we got to give a shout out to Savannah for taking that role. Now, I don't know if she struggled with that. We don't know that. We don't know what goes on in her home. But I think we can say it didn't get the best of her if, if she did struggle with it. So salute to her. We also got to salute to the brothers, the men that was in LeBron's life at a young age. You know, brothers, we got to give back. We got to give back. You know, a lot of us have kids. But if your friend, if your kids have friends and they don't have a father figure, you be that example. You know, there's a lot of men I looked up to and I emulated deacons, coaches, uh, neighbors. Everybody's watching. Bad, good, and different. Everybody's watching. And somebody out there can possibly or will possibly emulate you or mirror you. So we got to be careful about how we move. So salute to those brothers. Salute to LeBron James' friends. Man, he's known these brothers, I think at least three of these brothers since high school. I think he met one of them his rookie year. We got to salute Maverick Carter doing his thing, Rich Paul, Randy Mims. Man, that's a lesson, brothers. That's a lesson, man. That's, that's a couple of lessons in that. Attach yourself. Link yourself to good brothers who want what you want. And when I say want what you want, they want greatness, you want greatness. They want righteousness, you want righteousness. Now, although LeBron wanted to be an NBA star, obviously the, the other brothers <laughs> didn't have the capability of being NBA stars. But the common denominator within them, they all wanted greatness. They all wanted to get out the hood. They all wanted to live, leave rich legacies. And that's what these brothers are doing. Man, these brothers are doing some great things. And so LeBron took these guys with them. One of the brothers, I can't remember who it was. I don't know if it was Rich Paul or Maverick Carter. LeBron met him, I think, his rookie year in, uh, in the airport. And this brother was selling throwback jerseys. And uh, he, was, he was selling the Mitchell and Ness jerseys. He had the hookup on the classic jerseys. And uh, LeBron ran into him. They formed a relationship. And they built off of that. And here we are, man. Years later. 20 years later. And these guys are still building. Man, that's a lesson, man. Like... Take somebody with you or take many people with you who are going in the direction you're going. You can't take everybody. But if you're going in the same direction they're going, hey, let's ride. The other lesson is, man, these brothers had to show a level of meekness or humbleness and security. To be attached to someone so popular, so beloved, so talented, and not feel a way. 
and say, you know what, I know how to ride shotgun. I'm going to attach myself to this guy as his wingman. And I'm okay with that. I'm securing that. Man, that's a powerful lesson. Man, it takes a team to really get to where you want to get to. Now, I'm sure over the years, these brothers have had blow-ups, have gotten into it, arguments, probably went some time without speaking. Man, that's life. That, that's, what, that's what happens, man. We're human. We, we collide. We have conflict. But obviously, they got through it. And they marched on. And I'm quite sure his marriage is not perfect. What marriage is perfect? I'm sure they've had their ups and downs. They got together in high school, man. You're pretty young. They probably had some maturing to do, I'm sure. Some learning, some growing on both ends. From, from LeBron and Savannah. I'm sure they've had problems with in-laws, newfound in-laws, newfound relatives. That's part of the game. But they stood the test of time. They stayed together and they marched forward. Man, a week ago, I guess a week or two ago now, like I said before, I told you guys I was in Houston. And I went to a cigar lounge. Shout out to them. And the cigar lounge is called The Spot Cigars and Bourbon in Houston, Texas. And I'm telling you, man, I had a great time. Man, I was only at this cigar lounge maybe two hours, maybe two, three hours. But we just talked about so much. And, of course, we got into basketball. And we got into who's the best NBA player of all time and of course you know you had some people saying Jordan you had some people saying LeBron I think they're both goats but I won't play it safe I do believe Jordan is the greatest NBA champ of all time I do believe that but I don't know if anyone did more with less of a supporting cast than LeBron. And I don't think there's a a better or greater NBA specimen than LeBron. I mean, if you're going to build an NBA player, you would build LeBron. Now, it could be argued, does he have the will of a Michael Jordan? Does he have the dog in him of a Michael Jordan? I'll give you that. I'll give you that. You know, Mike has more dog. I'll give you that. But they're both great. They're both great. But in this conversation, I said, I conceded that Jordan is the best champ of all time, NBA champ of all time. But LeBron's legacy would be family. We've never seen anybody do it like LeBron on the NBA level, maybe professional sports level in general, as far as staying out of trouble, not getting caught up in any scandals. Uh, Always with his kids, always with his wife. I don't think we've ever seen that before, and that's going to be LeBron's legacy. So although the billionaire status is great, man, that should be saluted. I'm telling you, that should be saluted. We should be mastering this physical, this material world, and the spiritual world. We really should be. So, listen, that's a great feat. But I think What's really going to be remembered and what's really going to last longer than anything is the jewels and the knowledge and wisdom he left us. He's going to leave us witnessing this, how he is as a family man, how he is as a father. And that's going to take his bloodline to greater heights. 
his kids, kids, kids. There's a lot of, there's a lot women can learn by watching that relationship. There's a lot men can learn by watching that relationship. And I think that's his greatest legacy is family. You know, Jordan wasn't known for that. You know, taking nothing away from Jordan. Jordan did what he was supposed to do. But LeBron's legacy, I believe, is going to be family. And really how to conduct yourself. Now, saying all that, man, they could we, they could announce tomorrow that they're filing for divorce. Tomorrow, scandal could come out. Hey, we don't know these people, right? But they had a good run if that happens. You know, I hope that doesn't happen. But I'm just saying, people are human. Things happen. But, uh, man, this is quite a feat. And this goes to show you, man, with discipline and focus and just making the right decisions and attaching yourself to the right woman and attaching yourself to the right brothers. And in women's cases, in the women's case, attaching yourself to the right sisters, the sky's the limit. And let me tell you, man, I think this brother is just getting started. He's young. This brother is young, man. And uh, the business comes first. He understands that. And I think his wife understands that. I think his family understands that. The business comes first. His gift, his talent comes first. Right. Within context. Within proper context. You know, this brother spends over a million dollars on taking care of his body. He understands that he has to be at tip top shape. That's the foundation. And his basketball talent is just a springboard for other things. That's just the locomotive to take him to other places to showcase other things, his other gifts and talents. His purpose. Basketball isn't his purpose. That's his gift. That's his talent. But his purpose is to inspire. That's all of our purposes. To inspire. To motivate. And all of us can do it a different way. But yeah, man. That brother needs to be saluted. This is a great feat. And we really need to sit back and study how he got there. Shout out to his mom. Uh, We're going to shout out to his dad. We don't know the situation with that. You know, we can create our own narratives or let the media create their own narratives. We don't know that situation, but it is his seed. So we got to shout out that brother. We're going to shout out his wife, his team. And uh, shout out to LeBron. Because he's a center. He's a center of... a centerpiece to all this. So shout out to LeBron. You know, and I was thinking, when I was thinking about this, I was like, man, I just heard uh, a couple of people the other day. Celebrities. And I've heard people that are not celebrities say that you shouldn't be having kids unless your money is right. And I'm going to tell you, man, I, I agree with that. I do agree with that. But it had me thinking. I was like, man, so LeBron's mom's money went right. His situation, the people who created him, their situation wasn't right. So what if LeBron was never born? What if LeBron was aborted? Could he motivate could he inspire? You know, it just made me think. He's here to motivate somebody that comes from a certain that comes from the same situation or a similar situation he came from to let them know you can make it. 
there are no excuses. You know, uh, if I was born into a situation when everything is right, my home life is right. My, my parenting situation is right. My financial situation is right. I'm born into comfort. How can I motivate the guy who's not? And it maybe it's not meant for me to. Everybody's not meant to motivate everybody. But really, if we live by that logic, if we really believe in that logic, there's no Oprah. Right? We can go on and on, man. There's no, uh, there's probably no Johnny Depp. Who else, man? There's no Nelson Mandela. There's no Malcolm X. We can go on and on. And I'm not saying we should be out here having babies freely. But we all got a purpose. And uh, there are no accidents. And regardless of what situation you're born into, man, you can overcome anything and you can accomplish anything. This is really a lesson. Man, this brother's life is really a lesson we should look at. Aside from the billions. And I would feel the same way if it was a brother that came from the same situation LeBron came to and he rose to be a director of an IT company or he rose to own four uh, dump trucks or four 18-wheelers or, uh, or he, he rose to, to, to uh, manage a Walmart or whatever the case. Because that's very significant too. But the masses don't know those men and women. So we have to use people like LeBron as an example. I know guys, I know sisters that come from those situations like LeBron and have risen to great things. But the masses don't know these individuals. But I think we all know somebody that has done it. But when a celebrity like this does it, it lets the masses see. It lets the kids and everyone see that there are no excuses, that you can do anything. Yeah, think about it, man. Just think about this. Reflect. There are no excuses, man. You can accomplish anything, I promise you. As always, from me to you, love, peace.